Thank you for the introduction, Wake. I'm really honored to be invited here to share some of our, our unpublished work. And I'm uh, glad to follow Vivek, who is an upcoming uh, uh, physician scientist. So it was, I really enjoyed uh, the presentations yesterday and today. And I think uh, it's just been a fantastic uh, couple of days. Um, so I'm going to uh, talk about uh, our work on uh, uh, understanding mechanism of uh, myosin activator danicamptiv. I think we had a couple of outstanding talks yesterday uh, about other small molecules. Um, Safi showed uh, uh, something similar to this. It might have been in the, in the, the same slide that we know that uh, mu muscle cardiac muscle regulation has a thin filament component, and that's when calcium binds to the troponin complex and uh, resulting conformational changes, tropomyosin movement and exposing, uh, and exposing uh, myosin binding um, sites on axon. Then on the thick filament side, we have the cross bridge cycle, which again, uh, uh, Safi nicely showed yesterday as well, where you have ATP uh, binding to myosin, you have hydrolysis, you have uh, 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 a weakly bound state, uh, phosphate release, ADP release, the power stroke, um, and then the process repeats again. And again, um, the nice thing about the workshop is that we have a lot of redundancies in similar topics. So as uh, we have seen, you can have then also have recruitment from this uh, um, off state to on state. Again, uh, we had Vivek, uh, uh, nicely uh, describing uh, kind of similar type of ideas with the recruitment and having more myosin in non state. Now, I thoroughly enjoyed yesterday talks on, um, on omecamptive mecarbol, which uh, was a, is a first in class myosin activator, especially we bind myosin uh, heavy chain. Some of the molecular mechanisms are inhibiting phosphate release that was shown a couple of years ago, prolonging actomycin attachment. And I have to say, I, I, this bold and underlying is my slide change from today because I this was nicely presented yesterday in two talks that there's more uh, myosin in on state. So I, I uh, made that update this morning from uh, the data presented uh, yesterday. So the net effect is increasing the number of myosin heads in force generating states. And it was nicely shown yesterday how uh, that can have uh, a, a, a change at, at in, in, in force, uh, uh, definitely at submax levels. Um, as most of the you probably know, um, uh, Omicamptiv was studied in a phase three trial, but yet not uh, FDA uh, approved yet. And we're still looking for a subtype of patients that these mice and activators could be used for. Uh, Danicamptiv is the, the kind of the next. Uh, myosin activator that was uh, uh, developed by uh, myocardia. And again, as you mostly know, most of these things are discovered by, at least one of the primary screens is a myofibro ATPA screen. And on the right here, I have a force TPA uh, curve from the original, uh, one of the original publications of Danicaptive showing uh, that at a two micromolar, there's changes in, in, in force, especially at submax. And some of the mechanisms are thought to be um, uh, increasing number of myosin heads available for, for, for cross pitch formations. But there's really, as much as we have data on, on uh, omecanthiv, there's not as much uh, on, on danicanthiv. And the, one of the things that we're interested in is are there shared mechanisms, are there differences? We, uh, and then, um, Danicamptiv has made it to a, a phase, uh, a phase two a clinical trial, and they're looking at genetic DCM. So, what I'm going to share uh, with you today uh, is unpublished work that's under currently under review, and it's on it's on bio archive. I would say about ninety percent of what I'm showing you today is in the in the bio archive uh, paper. Some of the data. Uh, are in response to reviewers that we have uh, obtained that's not in the original uh, by archive paper. So we are, we wanted to look at uh, how data captive impacts uh, beta myosin chronic function, and we're going to do steady state and dynamic mechanical measurements, some of which you were introduced to in multiple talks yesterday and today. 
And then uh, we want to look at reduction in assay to investigate individual uh, states of the prospect cycle. Uh, we're going to start by first doing steady state measurements. I think most of you are familiar with, and, and, and Safi nicely showed this again uh, uh, yesterday. So we're going to uh, uh, take cardiac, uh, we're going to take hit uh, cardiac tissue, uh, demembrane it, and then do isometric force measurements uh, going from low to high uh, calcium levels. And they do things like um, slack to stretch to try to figure out what. Uh, some of the cross bridge uh, cycling parameters are. So as uh, similar to what was in the original um, Dana Camptive uh, discovery paper, as uh, you can see that this is, this is again, pig tissue, this is a force and TCA. You can see that this is the control with uh, 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 DMSO versus uh, Dana Camptive at one micromer. You can see a, sh uh, a shift to the left of the uh, force PCA curve. Um, and um, uh, a slight, uh, but a statistically significant increase in maximum force. The PCA50 has increased, the maximum force has uh, slightly increased, but you can see that most of the change that, that we have is in the submax uh, um, uh, region. And as a result, you, when you fit your uh, force PCA uh, curve, you'll have a, this, the flattening of the curve and the hill coefficient is uh, almost, uh, 50% uh, uh, decrease. And then looking at the uh, KTR, uh, at the maximum calcium, the KTR is, is, um, is decreased. So the, the interpretation uh, that we took from this is that there's a, uh, this idea of having changes in the submax can uh, be suggested, uh, or at the low calcium level could be su uh, su uh, suggestive of um, Increase in the on mice and uh, 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 an increase in the uh, in in the proportion of mice in the in the on state. The next we uh, you know in in at the University of Washington one of our favorite assays is the is to use my fibrils because it can allow you to uh, measure uh, kinetics and uh, again Safi showed some scheme that was similar to this uh, yesterday. You have bundles of my fibrils. You do. Um, you, uh, um, you can do a fast switch going from uh, low calcium to high calcium, activate, then you go back to low calcium. You can do a, 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 you, can, you can go to a, go to KTR measurement and then go to low calcium and then you get the, the uh, relaxation parameters. Then here the parameters that they're interested are this uh, uh, fast space, uh, uh, here, the KRL fast uh, on, the, on, um, on the linear portion, we have the uh, KRL uh, slow that uh, tells us something about uh, cross bridge detachment rate. We have the three year slow that tells us something about, um, uh, tells us about the uh, duration or how long it takes for uh, the thin filament to deactivate. Again, again, this is on pig tissue. So going back to the myofibrils, this is a, a, a an example of a uh, of a pig myofibril with no drug. I mean, Dana Kathy, you can see that, the, and this is normalized to highlight some of the kinetic uh, changes. Again, the the max force was slightly increased. These are paired samples, and the technical replicates are in, in are the smaller dots, and we have uh, three biological replicates uh, for uh, uh, for each of the groups. And you can see that max force is increased. Uh, the, the, K, the rate of activation is, is slightly de uh, decreased. And again, in terms of uh, mechanistic studies, we're, we're really interested in the, in the myofibril data. You can see that this is an uh, example uh, tracing of the, the anacamptive in, in blue, and then our, our control in black. We've zoomed in on the, on the slow phase here. Hopefully, you can appreciate that there's a uh, difference in both the duration of the slow phase and and uh, and the rate. I mean, you quantify that, uh, uh, and and, and uh, the rate of the fast phase is also decreased, which uh, is it, it's shown here. So the rate of the and the quantifications are here on, on the right. You can see a, a decrease in the uh, KRL fast, and then the uh, TRL slow is. Prolonged, meaning that the thin filament 
takes longer to deactivate, and the um, and the uh, and and the KRL is is decreased. And these are all at uh, uh, at maximum uh, uh, PCA concentration. So at maximum PCA level. So what we we Concluded from this was that we have a reduced cross bridge detachment, and then we uh, our idea was to try to look and see if this is due to product release. So ADP and phosphate, especially since phosphate has been shown to um, be involved in uh, in omecanthin. So going back again to our scheme that I showed at the beginning, so we're gonna try to uh, look at recruitment. Uh, so we think that we're affecting recruitment. So we're going to try to investigate the mechanism of that, or or uh, or, or try to Im investigate that. And then on the cross bridge side, we um, our decreased rate of cross bridge uh, release and duration of thin filament deactivation suggests that we're affecting the cross uh, bridge cycle. And we're going to look at phosphate release and and ADP release. So again, uh, we are at the uh, at the Muscle X, so obviously there's X-ray diffraction involved. So I, I mean, Ludwig already described uh, these uh, uh, already, and Sam described it earlier too. So we are uh, going to do X-ray diffraction at resting conditions, and we are uh, get equatorial and um, meridional patterns. And as uh, everyone in the audience knows, the equatorial will tell us about the pa hexagonal packing of the thick and thin filaments, and meridional will tell us about uh, periodicity is along the long axis of the my filament. And this is uh, some members of our team uh, making measurements, I think, within the last year. Um, again, um, Vivek nicely demonstrated what some of these indices uh, mean, but just to uh, review, we're going to talk about 1110. One, one, uh, and if, if it's increased, you're going to have uh, the myosin heads be closer to the thin filament. And um, and that's and then the uh, D10 is the distance between the uh, thick filament. So you can see there's a slight increase in the D10, which has been seen in uh, other um, uh, myosin activators, uh, including the ATP that, that our group has studied before. Um, and then I11 I1, I10 is increased, and uh, this is very similar to the data that was presented yesterday for. Um, uh, Omicam to Macar. And on the, on the meridional side, uh, the, the two reflections that I'm going to uh, uh, focus on is the myosin uh, uh, layer I1 and M3. And uh, these will describe the organization of the myosin heads. Uh, and you can see that both of these are, the intensity of both of these are reduced. And these all together support the idea that you have. Um, uh, more myosins, uh, uh, more myosins in the on state, and the myosins are primed and, and ready to be activated. And this is, uh, I guess, opposite of what we were seeing from Vivek showing in the in the uh, depressed RBs in the previous slide. So we have uh, we have uh, uh, successful look at the cross bridge recruitment. So we think that we have more mice in the non state. Now I'm going to go to the cross bridge cycling side. So, first, we wanted to um, uh, investigate if uh, Danacamp was similar to OM and it affects uh, phosphate release. Uh, so, what, what we did was we did uh, uh, similar stages to what had been done before and go back to our um, uh, steady state force measurements and then make measurements increasing levels of phosphate, which, uh, which will push the myosin and cross bridges to, to the weakly bound state. When we did that, we, and then uh, we didn't see much of an effect. So this is uh, for, uh, force, uh, relative force as you, as you titrate the phosphate and uh, uh, it, it, this is an expected pattern that you see and, and there was no difference when we added um, uh, Danicamptive here. So the interpretation here was that Danicamptive uh, most likely does not impact uh, phosphate release during the uh, during cross bridge cycle. So next we're going to investigate ADP um, release, and then uh, similar to phosphate, we made measurements 
in presence of ADP and try to push the equilibrium, the equilibrium state to, uh, towards a strongly bound uh, uh, actomize and ADP state. We first started uh, by uh, going to even a more reductionic assay and use in vitro motility assay for uh, most, of, uh, most of you are from familiar with this. This is uh, when you isolate um, myosins, put them on a cover slip, have fluorescently labeled uh, actin, and then you, you uh, would look at filament velocity. This is what an example of a video like this uh, um, looks like. Uh, so we have measurements with the drug, and then we raise ADP level. And you can see, uh, the, so this is in the no drug situation. This is the expected pattern when you uh, increase ADP levels, the filament velocity would, would decrease. And uh, when we uh, reduced anacampin, we saw uh, that there was a decrease in the rate. So this is when you have, uh, only ATP and the, you know our experiments are usually done two uh, minimal ATP. When you then introduce an elevated amount of ADP, so you have a, you have one millimolar ATP and one more ADP, there was really no difference. And uh, this suggests that danicamptive and elevated ADP have a similar effect. Um, and with the hypothesis here would be that danicamptive is pushing the equilibrium state uh, in favor of more strongly bound cross bridges and not affected by the uh, elevated ADP. So again, we wanted to get uh, more data on this. So we, we went back to our myofibrils and tried to do this time at a sub-maximal uh, calcium concentration. So we performed uh, similar uh, myofibril measure, uh, measurements at a PCA of, of 5.8. And uh, uh, here, the groups are going to be uh, no drug is going to be in white, the Dana cavity is in blue, and again, similar to the previous uh, uh, set of uh, conditions, you have uh, when, you, when you have your uh, activation in presence of ATP or in, in presence of the same total nucleotide, but half of it is uh, ATP and half of it uh, is ADP. So then in the uh, in the no drug situation, uh, we saw that addition of ADP has the expected, and this is uh, looking at submax scores, has the expected increase in, uh, in, in, in submax score. And then Danacamptive also with ATP uh, increases the submax scores. And we, this is not surprising, but having addition of ADP they did not really make any changes. So the, the two are not additive. Looking at the kinetics, so if you look at the uh, the kinetics of the slow phase, uh, in, uh, having a, a submax condition with uh, uh, with it, with a elevated ADP resulted in in, in decrease uh, rate of uh, the, uh, of of the linear phase, and it was similar when you this is a similar uh, uh, change to when you introduce danicamptive, and again the addition of ADP was not additive here. Um, so the, uh, again, the same kind of uh, thought that the effect of the two is, is not additive and it's suggestive that that's what the mechanism is. So next we wanted to may have another line of more direct measurements of ADP reads. This time we uh, uh, collaborated with Bert Tanner who I, was logged in, in, the, in, in, the, uh, in the audience uh, earlier, um, uh, and we collaborated with, with his graduate student, Kira Turner, just at Washington State University. And then we, this uh, same kind of preparations as our isometric force measurements. These are the membrane pig tissue. You, did, you uh, do this length step, and uh, you, um, you have an initial. Uh, uh, increase in, in your force followed by the relaxation phase of the tissue as it, it reaches an, a, a new force. And this rate of uh, relaxation of this K-REL, uh, you can do it at, at different amounts of ATP concentrations. And then um, you, you can uh, look at the relationship between uh, ATP and, and this uh, K-REL, and you can see the presence or absence of drug. 
So when you plot the data, uh, as ATP concentration goes up, this KRL function uh, increases, and this has uh, been shown before. And then when you add uh, Dana Kamtev, this is at, uh, at most ATP concentration, this, this rate is, is lower. And then if you fit this data to the equation, that's shown here that BERT has published before, then you can get your uh, rate of detachment of ADP. Um, and that seems to be decreased as we expected. Uh, the, there's a slight increase in, 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 in the rate of ADP attachment. And, and that, you know, in this process is not going to be the rate limiting step. Um, and the, the amount of ATP take uh, needed to get the, the um, the 50% uh, increase is uh, also decreased in the in the uh, in the data counting. So uh, this uh, finishes the mechanistic part. We wanted to show uh, utility of this myosin activator in, in, in um, a preclinical model. So next, we use um, uh, a mouse model uh, that we have worked on in, in our group before, and and, and uh, Mike. Uh, Mike Reininger and Jen Davis has published on before as well. This is the I61Q uh, uh, CTNC model, which is, which is a mouse model based on uh, T, uh, TNC that has a reduced ability to bind calcium, and the mouse model uh, uh, has a severe diet cardiomyopathy phenotype with uh, enlargement of, of, of the cardiac chamber and reduced cellular function. So first we took uh, cardiac tissue from this mice and this force PCA curve. And like, as it's been described for this model before, there's a decrease in, uh, in, in max force and a sh shift to the right. So here the scheme is going to be in the no drag, we have the circles and the dark is gonna be I621Q. So you have a right shift to the force PCA curve and addition of the drug, um, uh, shift this back. So the drug condition here is in blue, and there are the two scores. And the, uh, this happens for both the control mice and the I61Q. Uh, we here did not see an increase in the, in the maximum force. The PCA 50s are quantified here, and we saw that in the I61Q, you have a decrease in the PCA 50, and then you have um, uh, an increase when you add the drug. Uh, the Hill coefficient was decreased as we have saw with the previous, um, uh, with, 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 uh, with the pig tissue. And uh, the I61Q has previously been shown to have a decrease in the, in the Hill coefficient as well. And the, and the max KTR was inhibited as well, suggesting that uh, these changes are independent of the, the myosin isoform, which is the, uh, is the uh, alpha is the is the predominant in the mouse and the beta is the predominant in human and and, and pig. Um, next, uh, I would just want to introduce uh, our intact measurements. So these are uh, again, this would be uh, trabecular or papillary muscles that are mounted between a force transducer and, and a post. This time, first. Uh, uh, at one hertz and uh, making, again, iso, uh, isometric uh, measurements. So these are example intact um, trabecular tracings. Uh, on, the, on the left here, we have control mice on the right, the I61Q. And the black color is when you don't have the drug present and you have an increased amount of did one micromolar and two micromolar. You can see that um, the peak force, uh, the, peak, the peak twitch increases for both groups, and there seems to be a prolonged relaxation that is particular prominent in the control uh, uh, mice flex and to a lesser extent than I61Q. So those are quantified here with um, peak tension being at no drug reduced for the I61Q. And again, increasing doses ca causing an, 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 an increase in the, in the, um, in the, in the peak twitch. Time to peak slightly increase at the higher concentration only in the uh, in the control mice. Uh, the relaxation abnormalities, as I highlighted uh, with the average traces, uh, do happen in a dose-dependent manner for uh, 
the control mice uh, uh, quantified RT50 and RT90, but seem to be not as profound in the I61Q mice. Our group has been really interested in this idea of trying to do uh, uh, predictions of uh, if you have a HTM or DCM and in, in work that was published by Jen Davis a few years ago now, we came, uh, she came up with this idea of this tension index, which is an area under the curve. So if you have a positive number, you'd be more like HCM or have a contractor. If you have a negative area under the curve, you'd be more likely to have DCM. So we were interested to see um, how this tension index looks for our mice. The I61Q has been published before as a negative area under the curve, and it improves when you give high, the, um, uh, as you give Danicamptive, and uh, I, as expected, the area under the curve increases for uh, the control mice as well. So we were kind of, uh, done with these experiments. And then when the reviewers uh, reviewed the paper, they wanted to do some more in vivo. So this data was collected in the last uh, few weeks. So we took Dana Camptive, we uh, then give a uh, tailwind intravenous injection at two milligrams per kilogram in control mice in I61Q. And then the, the mice were under sedation from the time of the first injection we monitored them. And then we made a measurement 10 minutes uh, later, you can see that after 10 minutes, we have an increase in ejection fraction in both the I61 the control and I61Q. The, um, the extent of the increase in both groups is about the same. It's about a 20, it's about a 27 uh, on average percent increase in ejection fraction in the control mice and I61Q. So uh, this data shows how you can use um, some of the tools that we have all seen to try to get at a mechanism of small molecules. So I show you that Camptive increases force and calcium sensitivity in demembered tissue and myofibrils. I showed you that slows the overall cross bridge cycling um, and uh, including uh, activation and relaxation. This was in demembered tissues and myofibrils using the accelerated fraction. Uh, we showed that increased recruitment of cross bridges in resting conditions, and then we also show that um, using in vitro motility myofibrils and the uh, length step analysis that the uh, Danicamptive slows ADP release. And I showed you that we were able to recover the hypocontractile phenotype at tissue and organ level in a uh, mass model of dilated cardiomyopathy. Um, wanted to acknowledge the people to uh, the people who did uh, some of the work. So a lot of the experiments were done in. Uh, um, mostly by uh, Christy Koiker, who uh, is a research scientist in my lab and was uh, very well trained by Sam Harris during uh, her graduate school studies. Safi Moran, who's a uh, graduate student in Mike's lab, has done a lot of the, the my fibril work. Um, uh, uh, we collaborate with a lot of uh, folks at UW, including Mike, Jen Davis, the, uh, we're always excited to work with uh, Tom and, and Wei Kong, and uh, we have done uh, stop flow measurements with uh, Mark G, uh, which I did not include here, but uh, it is in our manuscript. And then I, I um, showed you data that we collected with, with Bert Tanner and, and Kira at Washington State, and uh, these are the, our, our funding sources. And that's a picture of uh, my lab and Mike's lab last summer. And I guess the oblig obligatory postdoc positions available slide. And let me see, I saw a couple of chat things come up. So I will see what they are. Um, Alexi was asking uh, on your fourth trace edition of ADP, Danny looks additive. This probably is the extractivation of the probably yeah, i think so i think that's correct um yes uh, yeah nice talk for it <clears throat> thank you um and then danny concentration relation to the d50 um it's a good question so so we picked so um the concentration so we uh, um 
you know, before we did our studies, the, the only other paper on Dana Campbell besides the, the main, the first paper was from Stuart Campbell's group. So we took the, we took uh, what they had, uh, they had described as the the D50. So we yeah, so that's what we did. Um, and then wins is big difference in ability of shortening with respect to oil. So can can Vince unmute and ask the question? I want to make sure I understand it correctly. Yes. Um, um, yes. Uh, I, I was struck by these uh, very striking results because for other things they look uh, similar to OM but uh, apart the fact that you have shown that uh, is mainly uh, related to um, uh, slowing down a DP release while the other is more mainly related to slowing down PI release but but uh, in, from mechanical um, point of view and um, performance in the entire trabecula is, is oh. really oh. is really yes. very important that uh, um, you have a uh, only relatively slightly reduces velocity of shortening, while in oh, OM. Vincen uh, yeah. Yeah. Vincenzo, is that you? Hi, sorry. Oh, hi. Hi. Uh, hi. Nice to see you. Um, so reviewers really wanted to do comparison studies. So I guess I will. Um, I I wasn't sure if they'll have enough time. So I will show you that um, nobody, to my knowledge, has looked at the. Uh, ADP release for OM. Oh, let me just go back here. Uh, and so let me go. Um, so we did, and OM affected too. So we got the same results. So we, we, we um, at the request of reviewers, we did the same measure. We uh, asked mm -hmm. her to do it, and we got the same results. So the ADP release is affected by OM too, but I, I'm not sure that other, I, I, when I looked, I didn't see that other people have tried mm -hmm. with OM before. So it seems mm -hmm. to be similar, but the phosphate sensitivity is what we did not get. And then the mm -hmm. other thing that we got is, uh, and this is well described by your group and others, this max force inhibition with OM seems to be more profound. So this is, so we did, Increasing yeah, doses it of depend, obviously depend on the on the concentration of calcium. This is something that very because the OM similarly has uh, this uh, very high increase in PCA fifty related yes. to a very a very a, a left for leftward shift on in the threshold for for me uh, of for um, the minimal calcium necessary for the yes. generating force. So. Uh, now, uh, yes, but, uh, really, and another point, uh, if I can, uh, can you go back to your uh, relation uh, with uh, increase e with concentration of phosphate? Oh, the, yes. The, the force in yeah. yeah, yeah, because this also is a very struggling, struggling and important difference. Um, yes, no, I, I totally, yeah. Yeah, I'm, yeah, sorry, yeah, I'm, because I'm, it, it, I don't know if you remember our, 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 our paper on the effect of phosphate, uh, actually, uh, is not on the trabecula, it's on the beta, on the slow myosin isoform of solus, rabbit solus, but I think it's it's it's, it's comparable. Yeah, yeah. So, so you see, yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah, so you did that. Yeah. that yeah. So I plotted similar to yours, and we, yeah, I, we did not get the same result. Oh, no, so you didn't get the, the potentiation by EPI? So, uh, it, it, not for Danny. No, no, so with Danny, didn't... but did you try OM? We have not tried. Okay, so so okay, so you don't don't contradict these results. It's just that the, no, no, the, I'm the just that, no, the, I, no, okay, different. okay, because this was striking, and this is related somewhat to the fact that uh, there is more uh, specificity in the uh, in a uh, changing uh, uh, OM with PI and or uh, and not with, uh, with the same for uh, affinity of OM or sites uh, for for. And the uh, Danny sites. I don't know if it's the, what is the sites of action of the Danny uh, in respect uh, to OM. I'm not sure. I, I don't know that we have any, there's no structural data that I know of. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, Vincenzo, one last question. Uh, one, uh, your last question. We did not do force velocity on impact. So, our the setup that we have used for this doesn't have the ability to do so. Um, 
uh, for South Africa. So we, I expect we, it would be the power will be reduced, but anyway, the, 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 there is a possibility of for shortening in Dani country that is not uh, in OM because of OM yeah. uh, power output in OM is dramatically dropped. Uh, really, yeah, that's the most uh, and I think in in in, in results in a in a larger depression also in the switch of ca cardiac trabecular because the switch of cardiac trabecular has intrinsic necessity to shorten and uh, that's why most of the, uh, the force capability go away because of cannot shorten almost yeah. no end. So that's so I expect, and I saw that you, you your uh, the drop in velocity is not uh, so intense. It's of the order of two one half or something like that. While in OM is much more than that. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thanks for your comment. Yeah.